why YouTube and why now? Is 40 too old to be a full-time YouTuber? I've been on YouTube for about 17 years. My career on YouTube is almost a legal adult. And I saw this number the other day and I was blown away. And it made me realize as much as I love this platform, I don't really take it as serious as I can. Meaning I post here and there sporadically. You have all seen my journey with family videos, concert footage, food challenges, to quitting my job, documenting the last few days of my 30s, but fast forwarding now to entering and being in my 40s and what that looks like and how I want to entertain myself as well as entertain you all, but also trying new things, living outside of my comfort zone, mending perhaps some areas in my life that need mending, but ultimately why YouTube and why now? Those are the questions I've been asking myself lately. And it really comes down to, I love this platform. I genuinely love this platform. And looking back at all the videos I've done, everyone says you need a niche, you need a niche, you need a niche. And yes, I do agree because I have two real estate, two channels, one real estate and this one. And my real estate channel has definitely seen more growth at a quicker pace, but I've also been more consistent on that platform. So there is data proving that this is important. But when it comes to my personal life and what I want to share, I am a multi-passionate. I am a multi-hyphenate. I, I love all sorts of things. Music, specifically R&B, hip hop. I love sports, basketball. I have loved learning new, new sports, playing tennis, watching the Olympics. I love food. I love drinks. I love traveling. So trying to find one specific area or space to post about or one topic to focus and talk about has been really tough for me. But it isn't tough. It isn't so tough to the point where I just want to give up. And that's where I'm at today. I'm 40 years old. It's been about four months since I turned 40. I've been dibbling and dabbling with YouTube, but I never really fully committed. And I think about what is that going to require of me? And for anyone out there interested in starting a YouTube, what does that look like for you? I thought about a few things, you know, all of the excuses that I made for myself as to why I'm not consistent. And the first thing that came to mind was, caring what other people think. I cared too much about what other people think, including my close family and friends. So once I eliminated those imaginary thoughts and stories that I was creating in my head, it got a lot easier to just show up and post, right? And it also helps when you post it builds your confidence. So the more reps I was doing, the more I was feeding into YouTube, the better I got at it. And again, once I eliminated those voices or those thoughts that weren't even true, I'm, I was able to just show up and have fun. And that's where I'm at today. So thinking about all the excuses I made for myself and how I'm taking those excuses as, as information to improve this go around, it came down to one, yes, eliminating the, the voices and the narratives I was creating in my head. And don't get me wrong, I'm human. I still experience it, but it takes a lot less longer for me to eliminate those voices than it did before. And that was part of, part of that journey was really sitting and saying, what's the worst they could say? What's the worst they can do? And if someone doesn't support me, are they really supposed to be in my life? Point blank period. Or are they projecting on me? All I can do is focus on my content and keep going. 
and hope I can inspire or uplift and encourage someone else because that's the goal. Next was thinking I needed fancy equipment or I had to have all these cuts and edits in my content that would make it appear better, make it appear more interesting. When in actuality, I just needed to post. I just needed to hit record and post. And I didn't even need a fancy camera. Do I have a fancy camera? Yes, I do. Was I using it to create some of the best content of my life? No. <laughs> in fact, it was my phone. It was my phone that continues to help me and to make this process a lot easier. And as I've built up my reps, again, I'll upgrade, I'll check in with myself. So thinking about what else was getting in my way, aside from these made up narratives or thinking I needed special equipment, when I just needed to start with my phone and the most basic and free editing software until I was able to afford and purchase better software, better equipment than I did. Otherwise, no, this works just fine. The next thing was making sure that you keep your dreams, your dreams. Going back to worrying about what other people think about you or what they'll say. Yes, that was an excuse, but it was also a real experience that I was going through. And I had to dig deep as to why. Why I was heavily focused on the imagination, the imaginary scenarios that I was making up in my head. And it came down to my dreams are just so different from anyone I know that it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to be different. It's uncomfortable to be creative. It's uncomfortable to express yourself publicly on camera. So when I say keep your dreams your dreams, it's not to say that you can't celebrate out loud or tell people about your dreams, but not everyone's gonna fully understand, not everyone's gonna fully accept, not everyone's gonna be happy for you. And again, it could be a matter of, they just want you to be safe, their way of protecting you, their way of, maybe they're projecting on you and that is okay to a certain extent but again I truly do believe that we are given different talents different skills different dreams and goals and visions for a reason and I'm in a place now where I heavily rely on ease versus resistance if something or someone gives me too much resistance I have to step back, either let it go or reevaluate it and make my decision from there. But if I have an idea and I go to execute it and it's smooth, things are aligning, things are happening, and then it's just done, then I know I made the right decision. When it comes down to support, you know, I always thought that as long as my family and friends support me, I'll be fine. And that's just the part of it. Because going back to your dreams are your dreams, I realized that we all live different lives. So unless I tell them directly, can you please like and comment my videos, like and comment on my videos, please share or repost my videos. It may not happen. And it doesn't mean that they don't support you. It doesn't mean that they hate you. It doesn't mean that they don't care about you. It simply just means we live different lives and all of our priorities are different. So it's up to me as a creative, as a business person, as someone wanting to learn and grow and expand my community and my audience, it's up to me to go to these people, my loved ones, 
my audience, my community and say, hey, please watch my video for at least three minutes, at least five minutes, one minute, or please just hit the like button. Please drop a comment that's more than four words. It really is appreciated. If I don't consistently do that, I personally shouldn't expect anyone to go out of their way to support me on their own. Otherwise, I'll always be disappointed. Of course, if it happens, it's a bonus. But if I'm basing my business practices, because at the end of the day, becoming a YouTuber, becoming a full-time content creator is still a business. And if I'm relying on emotions and people to prioritize me, but when they don't, I take it personally, then I'm failing myself. Again, I can put it out there as long as I'm communicating it to people. I have found that that works best. And as long as I don't expect them to do it on their own, I know it sounds kind of, sounds bad, but again, it's, it's not their fault. We're all leading different lives. So if you don't pause and pause with them to say, Hey, if you can do this by the end of today or the end of the week, I post a new vlog every week. If you don't mind just doing this every Wednesday for me, I would greatly appreciate it. Then go from there. And some people will, and some people won't, but again, you can't take it personally because there's so many people that are your actual target audience that will find you, that will resonate with you, that will build with you and post with you and share your content. I'm loyal to so many people that I don't even know in real life. I am loyal to so many people that my friends and family have never even heard of. But the moment they post a video, a clip, a podcast, an interview, sell merch, anything, I'm on it. And that's the place where I'm aiming to get. And I'm not their family member. I'm not their coworker. I'm not their best friend. I'm not even their friend or anyone they even know. I just someone that hit that follow or subscribe button. So that is why I see a lot of people take it personally. So when I see a lot of people taking it personally, when their family and friends don't support them, you really have to go out of your way to ask them and tell them to support you and let go of that mentality of, I shouldn't have to tell them. Well, in reality you do because we live different lives. We all have different schedules. We all have different priorities. You're not the only person. I am not the only person on the face of the earth that they're thinking about as much as much as I would love that. It's just not reality. Okay. I, I'm always thinking about my videos and no one sharing them because I'm not putting my best foot forward to communicate to that pe to people, people I know and people I don't know. So do your best to not take it personally when your family and friends don't support you. They're going to support you in other ways. I guarantee it. Whether it's an encouraging text message or a conversation to go over ideas or simply going out to dinner where you're not even thinking about creating content. So I hope that helps shift some perspectives when it comes to creating content, because I know how discouraging it can get when your videos don't get the clicks, they don't get the views, they don't get the comments, but it's all about the consistency. And these are last few points I have that, are for you all, but also for me, that I'm considering this go around as I'm working and actively becoming a full-time YouTuber, is consistency truly is key. It's what's gonna separate you from the rest. Yes, quality over quantity is, is just as good, but it's the consistency to make this a part of your lifestyle. So as much as content creation looks glamorous on TV, it looks, fun. It looks entertaining. All people are traveling. People are buying new cars, homes, new clothes. All of that is lovely. There are definitely perks to making it 
making it work and then it making it and then you making it becoming successful at this financially but consistency is key because if you're just filming and recording on a whim you're gonna burn out and lose steam immediately versus having a schedule some may not like that word when it comes to being location independent, having time freedom, being self-employed, being a full-time content creator. But even though I don't have a nine to five, I still have a nine to five. Obviously the difference is I'm working from home. As you see, I'm in the comfort of my home and in my pajamas. Yeah, that is wonderful. But you're not seeing me on a Wednesday at 11 a.m., which is right now, in my bedroom, filming a vlog, talking about my experience with becoming a full-time YouTuber. And talking about schedule schedules is key because those days when you run out of ideas or you don't know when you're gonna have time to film your next video, having a schedule, a time block, where you intentionally say, Wednesdays from 11 to 12, I'm filming new content, whether it's at home, outside, in a car, wherever. This is my time block. And then from 12 to one, I'm editing that vlog. Of course you may go over, you may go under, and that's okay. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know that from this time to this time, I'm committing and keeping the promise to myself that I will be creating content at this time. And I don't have to think twice. I don't have to rearrange my schedule. I don't have to create doubt or insecurity for myself because I know at this time, from this time, it's go time. And having that schedule will allow you to build that consistency. That's all I have for now. I, I'm looking at my notes and it was important for me to get that off of my chest because I learned that Having a YouTube for the last 17 years, almost a legal adult, I've been on this journey seeking some changes, some growth, but it was all because of me and where I was lacking. So now I'm focused on how can I show up for myself, keep my promises and put in the work and put in the effort. And even if it means talking to a camera or having just having the camera set up and just hitting record and talking about my thoughts and my feelings, how I normally would without the cameras on. I would be doing this without the cameras on regardless, but now I'm taking action and being intentional with showing up for myself, which is why you're seeing more content and even my real estate channel and possibly creating other channels. It all starts with the little details, the consistency, having a schedule, committing to that schedule, being disciplined in that schedule, and not running away or avoiding the difficult tasks like editing, <laughs> like learning more new skills, like talking to people, being an extrovert, even when you're an introvert. But ultimately, again, it, go, it comes down to the little details, knowing what you want out of this, having your goals, but also having somewhat of an end goal in mind, to keep you focused on this is where I need to go. At this point, at this stage, this is where I'm going. This is where I need